You're welcome back to my TBJ moment. We have a guest in the house. She is one of the earliest beneficiaries of Prophet T.P. Joshua's scholarship scheme. She is Dr. Yinka Oduwale. She's in the house with us. Hello. Hello. Nice to be here in Squan and thanks for the lovely introduction. Great. I actually feel like I've known you all my life. All right. Because I see you all the time on Emmanuel TV. Yeah. Great to have you here. Glad to be here in sure. person. So tell me, how did you get to meet Prophet T.B. Joshua? Wow. So I would say my journey with the Prophet started um, more than a decade now, like wow. spanning over a long time. Um, and I would say the journey literally started um, as a youth worker um, in the youth department um, with Squan, um, where we were responsible for some um, responsibility associated with the church. We would come to church early, collect the tight cards, mm. and just contribute to us the smooth running of the Sunday services. Wow. And um, during one of those um, youth encounters, I had the privilege to meet the prophet one-on-one, -on -one, because usually you would see the youth, the ushers, and other workers in the department, um, in the church. So it was during one of those encounters I met him, and he asked about my background and my education. Um, and at that moment, it took special care and attention about my education and spiritual background and decided to step in at that moment to be a mentor. Wow. So I enjoyed the privilege of um, having him as a mentor. And that obviously yielded um, successful fruits in the sense that the first being that I was able to graduate um, the first class. I'm from the University of Lagos, and I never imagined I would be able to graduate with a first class, actually. Wow. So I would say his mentorship played a huge role. And then, um, so that was really the starting point. After my first degree, the prophet constantly said um, I needed to go for a master's degree. Um, and being generous, he also sponsored that. So I went for a master's degree. Um, it was broadband communications at University College London. Broadband, broadband. communication. Yeah, broadband communications. Wow. The prophet took me under his care, mentored me, showed me great love and attention. I would constantly call him um, whenever there were audios or challenges, being away in a foreign land That's right. for the first time. So, of course, there were peculiar challenges that I faced being away from home. So I had the opportunity that I could call him, you know, I, and he would listen and give advice, you know, and of, that also yielded um, good fruits in the sense that I actually came top of my class. Oh, wow. And it was an international class. So, yeah, so I would say his mentorship really helped, helped a lot. But I'll say you, you're quite brilliant, too. Um, so, I so I, to say that. Yeah, but I would say to a large extent, I can't really take... Um, credits because there's so many people who are brilliant but um, you know without the grace of God sometimes you know brilliance is just nothing that's right so yeah I would really say it's more of the ad work and then you combine it with with God's good grace that mm. sort of made a difference I see I see I can see as you're talking I can see prophet TB Joshua reflecting because um, he has always said that the grace of God also assists us in achieving our our goals. Yeah. Now tell me, you have known him in several capacities, right? You've been with him almost like a father-daughter relationship that you had with him. Now how has his influence impacted you all the while you were in the UK? So I would say um, in terms of his influence, I would say the first notable influence um, of Prophet Joshua in my life would be humility. Um, he's a very humble man. Right. Um, if you compare him with his peers or counterparts, you realize he's actually really humble and simple to the core. So I would give um, good instances. So I remember once when I finished my master's, graduated top class, came home, you know, top of my class. And he said, well, now that you're here, you have to work in my office. You have to carry my bag. Great. You have to work as my secretary. Mm -hmm. You have to clean my office. You know, it really brought me down. 
so that you can actually understand that whatever achievements you've achieved is actually nothing. Right. Do you understand? So That's he right. built that humility concept into you there. Was this after your doctorate or after your master's? After my master's. Okay. And also during my doctorate as well. Whenever you come back from, you know, the UK, just forget the achievements. In this one, you should be humble. You should be, like, see yourself as nothing before the presence of God. So it would really bring you down and make you understand that without God, those achievements are actually nothing. That's right. So I would say those were things that really I learned from him. And also, another thing I would say would be um, after his passing on, I mean, this is someone who has been successful in all ramifications. Right. I mean, when you compare him with his peers. And yet he was able to leave all of this behind to go home without even thinking twice. So and that really um, reflected on me that even though I may be in the UK, pushing all of this, trying to get um, all the worldly possessions, eternal life is the key at the end of the day because without it, it's all useless. You know, if a man of such what dignity could leave all of this behind and That's return right. home, and he keeps hammering it, you know, whether you die young or you live long, what matters is the grace to continue living after life is over. So I would say those are the key things that really resonate with me wherever I am. You know, the US, the UK, it's all vanity upon vanity. If you do not achieve that eternal life, which he has achieved right now. That's right. So, hmm. yeah. oh. Right. Now, you've been, you've known him now for an upward of over 10 years. More than I would say. More than that. Yeah. Now, how, if, if you were to describe him, knowing the different virtues that he has exhibited, how would you describe him? I would describe him in a lot of words. And I would say that resonates to a lot of people because to different people is different things. That's right. So the first to me would probably be a father. Great. Um, and a father in the sense that um, usually with your earthly fathers, they take care of you, they die, and they leave you behind. That's right. With him, his fatherly love continues even after passing on. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I would say, first, a father. Um, second, I would say a disciplinary. He was a very disciplined man. Hmm. I mean, he took no nonsense. You know, he was very disciplined to the core. And also, I would say he kept on hammering the fact that spiritual life is the key, is the foundation on top of which you build every other thing, every other successes. So if you do not achieve that, in fact, you miss all. Right. Um, then also I would say he never really believed in mediocre success. He believed in the best. Mm. I mean, good instances were when I was um, trying to apply for schools. Usually you pick the top average just so that if you go, don't get into the top, you can get into yeah, the average. That's right. But if I had to say no, you go for the top. And what that means is you have to push yourself. You to have the limit. To, Exactly. That's right. And you know you have a father that you can't come back home to say, oh, I failed, I couldn't gain. That's right. So you have to constantly push yourself to the limit. So he believed in the ultimate best. Mediocre was not, hmm. was not something for him. So I would say those were key things I took from him, yeah. Wow. That's interesting. Now, okay, now to round this up, if you were to relive just one moment. You know, now he's passed on. Now, if you were to relieve one moment with Prophet T.P. Joshua, which will it be? Considering you've known him through and through. Wow. So I really have to pass on that, because, yeah. Can you imagine? <sighs> Take your time. I would say perhaps I would have maybe taking my time to actually enjoy the time with him. Because, I mean, no one thought he was going to be so soon. That's right. So maybe I could have just taken time to just value some of those moments we share, like, and enjoy those moments, mm -hmm. actually, and not, you know, be so carried away with, you know, trying to achieve something but just really soak in the moment with him. That's right. Because I can't really, I can't really um, point to one particular moment, but I would say I would just take more time to absorb 
some of those moments we had together, you know, because it was such a privilege to live with someone like that who started the race and finished strong. Mm. So. I like that. Started the race and finished strong. Yeah. So you, you live in the UK, right? Yes, I so do. So you, you came all the way from the UK just for this? I had to. I had to. So, Yinka, now you, you, you come back from the UK from time to time during the holidays to spend time with the prophet. So uh, tell me, how has it been each time you're back in the country? So usually um, I come back on holidays um, to Squan to spend time with the prophet. And um, for those holidays, I mean, typical holidays would be to relax, rest. But with the prophet, it was <laughs> nothing rest. like that. Yeah. yeah, you would work in his office mm. as a secretary carry his phone bag, answer his calls, mm. carry his bags with him whenever he was going to the mountain, clean the office. You would work just like every mm. other person, you know? And it would ensure that you were working, right. do you understand? When he's seeing visitors, you have to be there to assist. You sleep just as late as every other person. You were not treated specially. You yeah. did just as much as everyone, and I think that helped um, inculcate a good work ethic in him, yeah. in me, because um, the prophet is such a hard worker. I mean, you didn't, I mean, you also, you also learned to be humble. Exactly. Because, um, I mean, being a, a master's degree holder and then still doing many other things, forget cleaning about the it. office. So the way Scrum works is, even if you have a PhD, a master's, the moment you step into Scrum, just forget about those achievements and right. just bring yourself down humble yourself and the prophet is such a humble person so yes, yeah I mean expecting us to do that is it's just like following in his footsteps basically so yeah so you would do pretty much everything you were not treated specially you were given the same care the same love the same attention as everyone hmm. yeah. so but I understand that um, you went ahead to do a doctorate yes I did Wow. And this was thanks to the prophet, um, because I remembered vividly when I finished the master's. Um, the doctorate wasn't the next step I wanted to take, but it was the prophet's suggestions that, you know, you should go for a PhD. And we had back and forth. Um, and I was like, no, I don't want to do a PhD. And he was like, yes, you should do a PhD. Mm. Eventually, I succumbed, and I got an offer at Oxford. Um, and it was tough in Oxford, you know. It was it was really tough, but yeah, Oxford. Yeah, it mm, was. That's an Ivy League. Exactly, yes. it was tough because I remembered in my first year, I had issues with my qualifying exams. Would call the prophet constantly to listen to his advice and guidance, even when I had to do my viva for um, the PhD itself. I had really tough um, examinations, mm. but I think one thing that stuck for me was the fact that the prophet believed I could do it. That's Even right. though I didn't believe I could. Mm. But, you know, eventually, you know, with God's good grace, I was Still able so. to overcome those challenges. And in hindsight, you actually appreciate those challenges, right? Because if gold must be gold, right? Yeah. It must pass through furnace. Surely. So, Surely. Yeah. So what, 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 was, what was life like in the UK, especially during, during your doctorate? So I would say um, when I started my doctorate degree, to a large extent, I had become familiar with the UK system because I had done a master's degree. Um, it was a research environment, which meant I had to work alone most of the time. Mm. I had to do most of the reading myself. It required a lot of self-discipline, which right. I would say to a large extent, if you've lived with the perfect. You learn to be disciplined. Exactly. Right. So it required a lot of self-discipline. and challenges here and there and then obviously you also have to understand that you know um, the prophet sent you here so you cannot afford to misbehave that's right you understand that's because right. constantly he's calling you you know to check on your spiritual life making sure you know you're not getting carried away that's right you know because it's actually quite tempting there mm -hmm. so but you know under his guidance and supervision you know you in line. exactly so, yeah, so I would say he played a huge role in me actually getting um, the doctorate degree. And I'm actually grateful today because then I didn't really see the need. But now, I actually 
appreciate it because it actually makes me stand out in my environment, which is male dominated. Yeah. And the demographic as well doesn't favor me. But with mm. that special Grace. achievement, mm. exactly, it really makes you stand out. Like it's outstanding where your peers are being compared with you. That stands out. So now in hindsight, you actually appreciate the prophet's efforts in, you know, constantly and persuading me to do a PhD. Wow. So how do you feel now with a PhD so young and, uh, you know? So I would say, honestly, thanks to, the, to God and to the prophet, because I won't be seated here without him and without his belief that, you know, I could actually do this. Because it takes, I don't know, vision for a man to actually see that you could do certain things when you don't even think you could do it. So I would say, yeah, thank God. And yeah, thank God for mm. everything. Yeah. I mean, the journey, everything is all just been thanks to God. Yeah. And the prophets played a huge role in that. So, I can imagine. Yeah. Okay. So um, to, to round it off, after your doctorate, what are you doing now? So I would say um, currently I work for Vodafone, um, which is one of the largest um, or one of the biggest telecommunications operator in the UK. Oh, wow. So I work um, in the IoT group where I'm sort of responsible for um, developing some of their digital products. Um, so these are products for um, enterprises or businesses that are looking towards um, advancing or driving towards um, digital transformation. So industry 4.0, 4 basically. Mm. So it's a combination of different technologies like 5G, robots, um, mm. AR, VR. So specifically in my role, I look at um, developing some of these digital solutions for these enterprises. Oh, wow. So and how has um, the life of Prophet T.B. Joshua impacted on your present workplace? Um, so I would say the first being the work ethic. Okay. You learn the work ethic um, from this one, you know, working with the prophet, coming on early days, um, working constantly, you know. So I would say first, the work ethic is from Squan. Um, second, um, God's grace has also been helpful because um, in my department, I would say I'm probably um, the only female oh, wow. um, and also perhaps the only Nigerian really? um, and also perhaps the only one with a PhD. So yeah, it's all just been God's grace. Uh, wow, you're really special there. Yeah, thank mm. God it's all been God's grace. And also I would say despite the achievements, um, I have to remain humble because wow. if I have to um, follow the full steps of Prophet T.B. Joshua, despite his achievements, he remained humble That's despite right. you know, all of this that he achieved. And ultimately, like I said, he finished the race strong. strong. Hmm. So I would say he's sort of um, passed on the touch to us to follow, follow in their footsteps. And no matter what we achieve, ultimately, um, if we miss that eternal life or, you know, what Prophet T.B. Joshua achieved then, I would say whatever successes we have today amounts to nothing. So now we have to make sure that, you know, despite, you know, succeeding career-wise, your spiritual life also has to succeed. That's right. Because ultimately, that's the foundation on which other successes will be based upon. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so I would say to a large extent, following in their footsteps and making sure that, you know, um, I don't fail because I can actually afford to fail, you know. It's left such um, an impact and a footpath that we have to follow. That's right. So my prayer is um, the grace that I am and others constantly follow their footpaths and, you know, eventually also finish the race strong as he has done. Great. No, because the prophet has always mentioned that part that you have to strengthen the spiritual part of your life. Yeah. If you succeed spiritually, the rest will naturally follow. Exactly. Thank you very much, Inka. You really, really, really thrown so much light on your TBJ moment. Thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure to be in Swan. You're welcome. All right, viewers, <laughs> you just listened to Dr. Yinka Uduwale. Don't go away. There's more coming on my TBJ moment. Stay with us. 
Welcome back to my TBJ moments. That was um, Inka and um, Justin you just heard. And I'm sure there must be a take home from there. Or what do you think, guys? Uh, absolutely. There are so many highlights in today's conversations for me uh, and so many things stick out. But as a lady, uh, I particularly enjoyed Yinka's, uh, Yinka's interview, um, especially because, you know, we've seen her journey on Emmanuel TV several times. But getting this insight and also just a reminder of the fact that Prophet TV Joshua was really, really big on women empowerment. He was he found it oh, was yeah. incredibly important to make sure that women, young women, got educated. So, and you empowered. know, that was when I listened to Yinka's uh, conversation, it reminded me of that. And I just wanted to share that again, that it was very, he always, always, always made sure that, you know what, ladies, don't feel like you shouldn't go to school. You should also get educated and That's go right. as far as you can. That's right. I mean, he's... Uh it's just awesome there. But my take home there is the fact that no matter who you are, no matter your attainment, learn to stay humble. Mm. Because Inka said in the interview that after, even after her doctorate degrees, she would come home to Squan on holidays mm. and um, she's treated just like everybody else. Mm. No special, no preferential treatment. She is disciplined just like everybody else. So that has really impacted positively on her, and she's taking that to her workplace, even there in the UK. Wow, so she's teaching them about the University of God. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so me, I could really relate to Justin, because mm -hmm. I was working with him as a fellow disciple. I could really relate, and I like it that he brought me back to the most good time as fellow prophet TV, Joshua, about how he was really a good mentor, caring. Mm -hmm. He was a father to the fatherless. Mm -hmm. And I like it that he inspired Justin to continue the work of love and mm -hmm. charity. So for me, I could really relate with everything Justin spoke about. I mean, imagine coming all the way from Australia. Mm -hmm. That's, that's quite a calling, isn't mm -hmm. it? That's a long <laughs> way off. And uh, of course, you can say that it takes the spirit of God to know mm -hmm. when you hear a calling. Mm -hmm. So I think the grace of God was uppermost there mm -hmm. for him to have heard it, got the calling, and he listened mm -hmm. and took the journey made yeah. that move yes absolutely. and that's why today he's he's happier for it yeah absolutely wow so many things hmm, uh, so that many. we can we can go uh, on pick and up on and, and exactly <laughs> <laughs> we might have to replay those interviews but um you know what i believe this is all we have time for for today's edition but that doesn't mean we aren't coming back with plenty more plenty more because oh. trust me my tvj moments do not run out At everybody all. has a story to tell so join us again next time on my TBJ, TBJ Moments. Moments.